Good morning. Welcome to St. Augustine's Parish as we celebrate Easter Sunday. Our celebrant is Father McSweeney, and this Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. Please rise and join in the processional hymn, Jesus is Risen, number 177. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, to prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries, we must first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. (laughs) 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. This past Good Friday, I shared with those who gathered for the veneration of the cross that within the last two weeks, I learned something new that impacted my understanding of what we celebrate. I learned that sheep have a natural antibody that protects them from snake bites. There's something in their blood that is an anti-venom that prevents them from being affected by the bite of snakes. So much so that we use the blood of sheep to create anti-venoms for when humans are bitten. The blood of the lamb conquers the bite of the serpent ties into everything we celebrate this week, especially the culmination today. Because on Good Friday, we know that Christ was crucified on Calvary, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And according to Jewish tradition, the skull that was buried there was the skull of Adam. So that Christ's blood poured on the ground to sanctify the first one who was bitten by the serpent, the first one who gave in to the temptation of the devil. And as we know on Holy Saturday, the harrowing of hell, he went into the land of the dead to bring the cure, to bring them the understanding that they were not in darkness forever, but he was the light that would lead them to eternity. That's what we celebrated Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and in the culmination today. The understanding that the blood of Christ cures us from the bite of the serpent. Because the world doesn't get that, and the serpent is running rampant in our world today. 30 years ago when I was in the seminary, we were taught in moral theology about the increase of relativism in our culture. Relativism is the belief that if you think it's true, it is true. That your truth matters and someone else's truth might contradict you, but everybody is entitled to their own truth, which is ridiculous. We believe there is objective truth in this world. There are things that are true, whether we like it or not, or whether we believe it or not, they're true because they're true. 
We have mathematical truths. Two plus two equals four. If there becomes a group that believes that two plus two equals five, their truth isn't the same as our truth. Their truth is wrong. H2O is water. If someone comes along and says, no, water is made out of something else, that's my truth. That truth is not true. It's wrong. At that time, Joseph Ratzinger, cardinal in Germany, later Pope Benedict XVI, warned that there would be a tyranny of relativism, that relativism would not only take root because it's the source of the serpent, but that it would so grow that if there were those who were speaking the truth, found that they were not being accepted because they were speaking the truth, because relativism had taken over. Everyone has their own truth. Everyone can be who they want to be. That contradicts the first commandment. We do not make ourselves God. It's not our truth that matters. It's his truth. And we can see the result of the poison of the serpent has flourished and today reminds us that we are responsible because we believe the blood of the Lamb conquers all. We believe that we have the responsibility to bring the truth into the world. The objective truth. The truth that was handed on to us by God himself. For he proclaimed himself to be the way, the truth, and the light. Easter Sunday reminds us that the love of God was made flesh to teach us how to live our lives so that we could one day enter eternity. There were those who thought the Messiah would come to establish an earthly kingdom, but science will remind us that this world is temporary. It will one day cease to exist. Our Creator came to teach us the path that leads to eternal life, and in conquering death, He accomplishes that for us and teaches us through all we celebrated in this Holy Week that it is His body and blood that sustain us and guide us and conquer the poison of the serpent. And we must always recognize we have all we need to attain eternal life if we only accept it and follow it in our lives, if we know that Christ came to be the light that shatters the darkness, he came to be the love that overcomes hatred, he came to be the unity that conquers all that tries to divide us. Because there are so many things in our culture today that try to divide us into different little things and to pit one thing against another thing. Christ reminds us that the Father is one. The serpent is legion. He is many. He seeks divisiveness. We are the ones who seek unity because God is unity and God wants us to reflect that unity in our lives. So as we celebrate Christ's conquering death for us, as we recognize our responsibility to be bearers of the truth in a world that does not always want to hear the truth, we know that it is given to us because it's the path that leads to eternal life. It's the path that leads to our salvation. And if we take our salvation seriously, we must each and every day take up the cross and follow him because he conquered death for us. And he taught us how to live our lives so that we can live for all eternity with him. And that we must recognize our responsibility to answer that challenge, to live that challenge, and to be witnesses of that challenge in the world each day. On Easter Sunday morning, it's our tradition in the church for the people to renew the vows of their baptism. So I will ask everyone to please stand. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now let us place our prayers before our Heavenly Father as we celebrate the most sacred day of our Lord's resurrection we turn with confidence to the Father and offer him our prayers for Pope Francis and all bishops of the church that the risen Lord may inspire them with heavenly strength and wisdom we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people throughout the world, that they may eagerly welcome the Prince of Peace into their hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our parish community, especially for those who have just been initiated into the church, that they may be blessed and fortified in their faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, the religious life, and the diaconate, especially from our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish, especially Diane Pezuluch, Ellen Mitchell, Tom Johnson, Joanna Siricella, Anna Milio, Chris Slattery, Manuel Aristi, Terry Beresford, Angela Ciparano, and Maria Reynolds, that they may receive God's strength and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, for all the deceased members of St. Augustine Parish, and especially for Juan Giancarlo Ronalino, that they may receive eternal rest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially for the people of the parish for whom this holy mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for stronger marriages and families, for those in single life, for a greater respect for all human life, for all the intentions in our parish book of petitions and all those intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, 
You are the resurrection and the life. Grant us, we pray, that as we journey through this life's toils, we may be filled with your peace and love. For we ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in the offertory hymn, Ye Sons and Daughters, number 172.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exalted with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, <coughs> and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating that most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit. Grant them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen, amen. The peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other a sign of peace Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. But if Christ can be saved for everlasting life. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Look upon your church, O Lord, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Before our final blessing, just some words of thanks, especially to our choir who's been with us throughout Holy Week making our celebration. For all my Easter angels who come each year and decorate the church so beautifully under the leadership of Joan Pires, thank you for all that you do. For our For all our ushers and the Knights of Columbus who have been the backbone of the parish throughout the pandemic and continue to serve the church valiantly, thank you to the Knights of Columbus and the ushers. (laughs) To our altar servers, we had so many last night and we're starting to get them back in droves. Thanks be to God. Thank you for those who serve at the altar for our deacons. For our deacons, Father Figueroa, and all that happens in this wondrous parish of ours, our Holy, Day, our Holy Week services were packed. It's amazing. Some people think the people haven't come back from the pandemic, but that's not true in our parish. I think we're actually, we have more attending Mass than we did prior to the pandemic, so thanks be to God, something is working. So bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion, defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. 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 Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. 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 And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth in the peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. St. Michael, the Archangel, Please join in the recessional hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 178.